Yield County Jail that now houses the Williamson County Historical Society was one of only five such buildings in the United States that combined the jail and sheriff's quarters. Built in 1913 for $40,000, the kitchen, dining, and receiving rooms were on the first floor, and the second floor contained three bedrooms and a bath. In the attic was a large and well-furnished room, big enough to keep juries during a trial. The jail's at the rear of the house, where there were two cell rooms on the first floor and two on the second floor, each with a capacity of 24 prisoners. The jail compartment was fireproof and entirely separated from the residence section by massive concrete walls. The cells were painted gray, and the cell rooms are tinted lead color. Each cell had a commode, and each cell had two wash basins with hot and cold water. In October 1913, 16 male prisoners, four black and 12 white, were marched from the old jail on South Madison Street through the public square to the new jail, watched over by 12 guards. The men were segregated in their new quarters, the black men in one compartment and the white men in another. The newspaper said that one of the 16 prisoners was old enough to be toothless, while one was young enough to ask to be sent to the orphan's home. The sheriff's family had a motley crew living under their same roof. One of the original prisoners was lodged in the jail for whipping men right and left in Marion. Then 12 bootleggers, 11 from Johnson City, were sentenced to 30 days in jail, suddenly bringing the population to three dozen prisoners. Another man was jailed for being drunk on a nearby railroad platform. It was said he had had a fight in a saloon before that and pulled off one whole side of a man's mustache. This room upstairs at the jail, where a doctor's office is displayed at the museum, was sometimes used for solitary confinement. Over the years, many interesting events took place at the jail, as well as some sad ones. There were deaths, a birth, a suicide by hanging, and a legal hanging. Rado Millich, known as the Montenegrin, was a Charlie Burger gang member who was hanged on the north side of this jail next to Paradise Alley in October 1927. He had been tried and convicted of murdering another Burger gang member. Sheriff's deputies manned the rooftops of neighboring buildings in case the gang tried to rescue him. The gallows, on loan from Jackson County, were later used in Franklin County to hang Berger himself. An alarm bell, connected to businesses around the public square, could alert them if there was an escape or another emergency at the jailhouse. While there were occasional escapes and escape attempts, mostly the prisoners themselves helped manage the jail and Kangaroo courts were held often. Those convicted of a violation or a discourteous act by fellow prisoners were made to mop the floor and other such chores. Sam Latuka tells us about the longest resident at the jail. The longest serving inmate we had in here was a guy by the name of Walter Goodpaster back in 1959. He was in here for a little over a year and that was just because he kept appealing and didn't get moved out of here for quite an optometrist? He was an optometrist. He ran for county office. He ran for county commissioner within just a year or two before that murder. Wow. Somebody threw rocks at his dog. The sheriffs who served during the time this building was in use were Milo Duncan, William Shannon, Willis T. Harris, Lawrence Cannon, Melvin Thaxton, Ora A. Kirby, George Galligan, Carl Miller, Warren Coleman, Dean West, G.J. Frick, Zolly Carter, Harold Farner, Arlie Wilkins, and Russell Oxford, who moved out in 1972 when a new jail was built at the new courthouse. After another 40 years, that jail aged out as well and had to be replaced. But thanks to Sam Latuka and his volunteer staff at the Williamson County Historical Museum, this old jail that served the county for nearly 60 years looks like it could be put back in service any time. Thanks to Sam and his Marion, Illinois Historic Preservation website for their background information and to the Arcadia Wealth Group for their ongoing support of our regular history lessons. Reporting for the Marion Star Live, I'm Bill Swinford. The proceeding has been a production of the Marion Star Live. The material may not be reproduced distributed, transmitted, or otherwise used without the prior written consent of Swinford Publications, LLC.